Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Really Ghost Thief 2. Moving right along, it's time to start masks. You may be wondering why this is not the save from the end of Casing the Joint. The answer is, I was recording earlier today. I was almost done. I was halfway through the second floor, ready to finish things up, and I saved after a ghost bust I had not detected. Oh, that stung. But I had no choice. I had to restart the mission because I'm not going to put up a video where I'm not at least successfully ghosting if it's possible to do so. Let me talk about masks briefly. I believe it's possible to Supreme Ghost the mission. It's certainly not possible to perfect Supreme Ghost it. Not a chance. You will take some first alerts getting some loot, but it is possible to perfect Thief, so as always, that's what I'm going to opt to do. I'll point out the loot that you should skip that it's necessary to take first alerts on if instead it's your inclination to Supreme Ghost the mission. With that in mind, let's begin. I'm going to hit restart just so you can... I'm going to skip the movie, of course, because it's separately uploaded to the playlist, but I like the full verse objectives instead of the short form. Steal all three precursor masks. We have already, in casing the joint, discovered the contents of the letter from Karis to Gervasius. Apparently, Gervasius has got his hands on a cultivator as well. Looks like this run will be your one-stop artifact shopping center. Don't let your rush for the masks make you forget the value of money. Get 2,800 loot. No need for any rough stuff, don't kill anybody. And get out of the mansion and back to the streets. Easy enough, it was just a stupid oversight on what in the fuck is going on. Holy hell, have you ever seen anything like that? Let's try restarting again and see if things are a bit more normal. There we go. That's better. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Do you guys see that black and white business? Anyway, here we can listen to something I usually miss. One of the best conversations in the game, but I always got into the mansion before it took place. Hello up there. How goes your watch? Not too bad. Just catching a cold. <coughs> Not the weather we're having. Makes me wish I was inside guarding one of them exhibits instead of out here in the rain. How come we got stuck on outdoor guard duty again? We're guards. That's what we do. <coughs> do you know anything about the exhibitions? I've heard stories that the masks they're gonna bring are... are magical. Uh, and haunted. I don't know, and I don't care. We go through this all the time. You ask me stupid questions and then something goes wrong. Lord Bafford, Lord Donald, Sheriff Truitt. We worked for all of them and always got fired because someone broke in. Something got stolen or someone got killed. I'm always too distracted answering your stupid questions. When this job is over, you're on your own. I'm done with you. Hey, no need to get all heated about it. Taffer. <coughs> oh, those poor guys. Apparently, we have just messed up their lives. What's funny, of course, is that if you played V3, you know that the upper level guard does not follow through on his threat. They are members of the City Watch together once more in Thief 3, and they've got a series of hilarious conversations in that game, too. Of course, being, being literally fresh off a second practice run means I'm now pretty intimately familiar with this mission, which is good. So first, another conversation. Ah, child. Didst not hear thee. Thou art so silent, I thought I was alone. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. So, thou likest my new dwelling as well. Twas high time I replaced that old dotard, Norrell. There was not he could do for these people save lead them into the muck that mires his own mind. That senile old fool doth not realize his time of faith is over. Help me. Please help me. Please help me. Following Lord Karras, was so easy to lure Gervasius with choice baubles. 
Soon his exhibition will introduce more nobility to the wonders of our faith. They shalt wander through halls rendered safe by our craft, and be served by such docile helpers as thee. They shall gaze upon the wonders of fallen civilizations, and watch as we make it an attainable reality. How can they resist? Why do you do this to me? Why do you do this to me? Why do you do this to me? Meanwhile, I will attend to Norrell's former flock. Twas some effort, bending Gervasius to our will, but with Steward Duma's help and the right temptation, twas not that difficult. Someone, someone kill me. Someone kill me. Uh, good night, child. Leave me to my preparation. Return to thy duties. Help me. Please help me. Please help me. Mm. All right. Life is miserable for the servants. Anyway, we got some reading material in here now. Be ever wary for the pernicious forces that array against us. For every flagstone there is a root which seeks to crack through it. For every wall there is a vine which seeks to... Excuse me. Which seeks to tear it down. Know thou thy enemy and be ever watchful. For only so may we prevail. Karis. So I'm going to head through to the back room here. Because now there's a chest in here with a purse worth 50. Masks is a much more entertaining mission than casing the joint. I get the feeling that this is what the map was supposed to be like, and as they were running out of time near the end, they recycled it for the 13th mission just to make the game longer and whatnot, which I understand why they had to do. At the time, Looking Glass was drowning in debt. They were on the verge of going out of business, and Thief 2, getting Thief 2 out the door was a way for them to generate some revenue, hopefully in time to save the company. Of course, that didn't happen. They rushed it out the door, and it actually sold pretty well, but the revenue wasn't enough to save them. But we do see the lack of polish and the fact that things were rushed, and all the glitches and the lack of detail in some of the missions, etc. Let's read this scroll. Duma, we need a new gardener before I get back. The terrariums must be in tip-top shape. Karina loves plants, and I've been talking up the terrariums. If they don't look their best, I'm sunk with her. Duma, you must see this girl to believe her. Do your best. If Hobart isn't already overworked, get her to coordinate with the new gardener and get a crew planting new trees outside. Draft servants or guards or whomever to do the work. Get the trees from wherever you can on short notice. Hell, dig them up from Baffords if you need a source. Old Baffy will understand. He still owes me for the time he swindled me on that painting. You know, the one he swore was an original Durant. He knows I'm still annoyed about that, even if it was a prank. Bram G. P.S. Make sure to up the number of flower arrangements around the manor. It can be a drab place sometimes, and we should do anything we can to spruce it up for her first visit. So, open the secret passage. That chest just has broadheads in it, but this one has a purse we need. Brings our total to 125. We'll move on into the workshop now. Here's Foreman Hobart. She's standing here and she's looking at the door. That means that Supreme Ghosters can't get through that door. Fortunately, you can take advantage of the Watcher's blind spot to just use the hallway. Open her chest to get a gemstone, which brings my total to 225. And go out the same way we came in. Believe you me, I am going to use a second real save as I make progress. I'm going to close that. I'm going to listen at the door now. There's a guard close by. But I think he's on his way that way, which is what I want. So, I'm going to wait. I'm going to let him build up some distance. And then I'm going to try to use the Watcher's Blind Spot. Just hold right next to it. and then rush it at the last second. And you can bypass the Watcher. No problem. And you need to... Oh, I'm not going to make it in time. Hello? Someone... I was going to say you need to rush to one of those next shadows. So 
So let me tell you how we're going to go through this mission. We've already cleared the southern half of the first floor. The ballroom is tricky. The best way to get to it is from the southwest corner of the second floor. But bef this is also our way to the south part of the, su the southern wing of the second floor, which is the last place we want to clear because it's got the secret stairway up to the third floor. So what I'm going to do is actually using the foyer is the best way to get around on the first floor. So i am already cleared the southern first floor. Now I'm going to clear the northern first floor. Then I'll clear the northern second floor before I come back down, make my way up here, clear the ballroom, then do the southern second floor, and then move up to the third floor. So, with that road map in mind, let's wait till this guy passes us by. And we'll just creep out behind him. Now there is a guy who patrols back and forth on the second floor of the foyer, but and he can hear you and first alert if we open those doors when he's nearby. The thing we can take advantage of though is that those doors automatically close, and if we don't close them ourselves, he'll never alert no matter how close he is, which comes in very handy. So, I'm going to use this second real save and only hit the first one when I'm in a completely safe spot at a big milestone, like finishing a wing. Okay. You see Homie the guard there. I'm going to wait till he patrols in and turns around. Then I'm going to go to the secret room in the northeast staircase. You may wonder, why are we going there? That room was empty encasing the joint. Well, it's not empty anymore. There's loot in there this time around. Apparently someone decided the secret room might make a pretty good stash. So... Open it up. You'll notice that all the doors are locked now. We have to pick them open. There is no way to relock any of them. So we'll open this chest. It's got a lot of gold coins in it. My total jumps up to 350. I will then close that secret room. And next, I'm going to go ahead and tackle the barracks, which is something you should skip if you're supreme ghosting. You shouldn't mess with it because there is no way to do this. You see that too? without first alerts, but... Oh, well, back to work. Well, that was an unnecessary first alert, so I'm not going to take that. Let's just get to the darkness, and we'll pick his pocket right away. That's our first of 11 pickpockets. The Baron gets to eat cows all the time. And these keys are just about useless. So we'll drop that on his patrol route. Similarly, although, now the barracks is squirrely. Let me tell you about it. There are two patrollers who walk a route that one end is right outside the barracks door. One end is where he just turned around. When they're on their way from the barracks door down here, they stop and patrol into the guard room, over to the corner, all the way out, then they come here, and then they go straight to the barracks door. They start out pretty evenly spaced, but here's the problem. One of them is bugged. He will, first of all, be making the noises of a sleeping guard, even while he's walking around. And when he opens the door to go inside, he sticks. And he only starts moving again when we quick load. There's really no way around it. We have to quick save and quick load just in order to get him moving to be able to get everything. But we can take advantage of that sticking to both loot the barracks and get the pickpockets. There's a third guard who's standing right here and looks out into the hallway. We cannot get into this area 
without at least a first alert from him. There's just no way to do it. That's why Supreme Ghosters have to skip the three pick, well, his pickpocket and the two pieces of loot in the barracks. But I'm gonna go for it. I think, there? The, I think oh. the guy, I think the uh, sleep noise guy is already stuck. <laughs> So the key to getting by with only a first alert is speed. Thought oh, but see, something. because I quick loaded, no he, will. he unstuck. Guess just nothing. Look there. See anything? And now he's stuck again. See, he sticks going both ways. So when I quick load again. He's going to be on his way out, so actually now, I might as well wait for him and just pick his pocket here. Yeah, he sticks going both ways, and then every quick load will start him moving again. <clears throat> Maybe I got it backwards. Maybe they go... Who's over there? Look who's there. Over there. Hello. Oh. Hey! Hold it right there! Oh, nope, he's stuck. I just never quick saved with him inside, so he's sticking on his way out again. Okay, okay. Oh, but he didn't stick that time. So there's our second of 11 pickpockets. After he does his little loop, I'm gonna drop that right where it goes. You'll notice their patrols are erratic too. They walk past the door, they do little loops like that, they walk at diagonals instead of neatly walking along the carpet the way we'd prefer. But that's just how they do. Pinkies. Yes, he's on his way out here. So, not potato, potato, potato. I think they're both about to head to the barracks, <clears throat> and then the sleeper—I call him the sleeper because he's the one who's snoring while he walks—should stick on the way in if he hasn't already. <clears throat> Just because I've been here only a few months, I think that. It Let's let's listen and see if he moves in or not. Something like do with this serve. Nope, he's stuck. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wait and let the other guy catch up to him. Which you know, it's taking advantage of an engine glitch, sure, but there's no way around it. They are gonna stick together anyway, whether I'm moving or waiting, so. I might as well turn the glitch to my advantage since it's happening, <coughs> regardless of anything I do. It's not like I set it up. So now they're together, which is great, because if we keep them that way, it lets us do a couple of things. First thing I'm going to do, they're essentially out of the picture now until I hit quick load, so I want to be careful here. First thing I got to do is cross the doorway to that little shadow there. Who's there? Oh, which triggers a first alert all by itself. Seems quiet enough now. See. Okay then. And from here, dun, dun, dun. I want to dart over to that corner, but I want to do it without making noise on the top. Oh. So. Someone there. Nothing here now. I gotta get down, <laughs> which necessitates here. another first alert from him. Think that can we cannot lean forward. through the window and get his key, which is unfortunate. Now I'm gonna creep around the corner. And he'll first alert again. But he should only first, as long as you don't move too fast. Who's there? Hello? Now the mm -hmm. other two are gonna first alert too. But here's what I want. Actually I'm gonna <laughs> avoid those alerts. Now I'm gonna quick save and quick load again. So that they can get into the room. So 
now they're inside the guard room. I'm gonna sprint to the barracks. Crud. It's okay though. So now it's the time to get on the carpet, then sprint to the barracks before they come out of the guard room. We will quickly get both purses and then we'll get to the guard room and get his purse or his pick key. So open both chests. They each have a purse. Our total goes up to 420. Close the door behind us. Oh, they're gonna stick again. Never mind, I don't have to sprint. But they're not stuck now, so gotta sprint again. Well, at least wait till they get clear of the room. Okay. Wait till they get clear of the room. Don't step on the tile. And the key to getting the key with on again only a first alert. You're not gonna Supreme Ghost this. Don't hit the tile, but once you're in here, quickly. Speed is of the essence. There's that. <coughs> Who's there in the shadow? And you wanna just do the same thing on the way out. In and out, grab the key. And hopefully you can keep him to a first alert. I've done it before, it's eminently doable. Don't worry. What's that? Uh I tell you what, I should I should move back the quick save just a little bit. You see that too? Move it up rather. I just keep failing at this. If it helps, there are really only two tough spots in this mission. This is one of them. The other one is the ballroom. Okay, we're good now. Oh, creep across. What's there? Floor it. Get the key. <clears throat> oh well. Don't know what it was. Actually, now that I think about it, we should wait until they head off down the hall. Nothing making noise now. Because <coughs> now, they're gonna, gonna head toward the barracks. <laughs> Seems quiet enough now. Now is the best time to floor it out. Okay, then. And drop the key. Hello? Anyone there? What was that, you think? I guess not. Creep out. There. Just because I've been here. Mm. Looks like nothing. Now we need to move quick here again. Because those guys are on there. Well, no, we don't, because they're going to go into the guard room. Never mind. <coughs> Well, seems quiet enough now. Okay, then. <clears throat> Over there. There's a... I saw I something. Come on, it was. Damn. Okay. Anyway, you see the routine now. Just gotta nail the execution once. Hello? Show yourself. I'll wait for his first alert to settle. That seems no like will. Fun. Guess I'm just nothing. <coughs> nothing here now. <coughs> <coughs> Thought I heard something. Okay. He heard. The guys out there heard me drop the key. If you're wondering. Well, let's wait till they're good and gone. Hello. And let's drop it. Show yourself. Here now. Now, we've got a little time, <clears throat> but not a lot. We'll get back to this corner, <clears throat> and then I bet I can just run out. what it was so he just first alerted I opened the secret passage through the banner like I've done before and with the barracks done it's time for another real save hell it's time for a full-on real save because the secret passage is that most wondrous of things a true safe spot 
So coming out of the barracks, my loot total is 420 and I have three out of 11 pickpockets. Don't know why, I just thought I'd go into the bathroom because there's nothing in there. Onward. There are two bits of loot in the servants' quarters. This chest is just a slow fall potion, which I have no use for, so I'm gonna skip. Be quiet in here. Thankfully, both chests are unlocked. Gold coins in each bring my total to 470, and there's a scroll to read. Maddie, tell no one, tell no one, but read this and be feared. My master, the Lord Gervasius, you know, is close with Charis, the Lord of the Mechanists. We have been sent a servant of theirs, not a servant like you or I, a servant with a mask who stands silent and is nearly a machine. But I crept near to examine, to see if there was a man under the mask or but a device, and I heard it crying, Maddie, crying like a lost soul. I do not know what these things are, but I wish I had never laid eyes on them. that. It's time for us to make our way back out of the servant quarters. Nothing in there. Nothing in the kitchen. So we can go ahead and reclose this, although it takes a little bit of finesse to make sure both doors actually close. Head to the end of the passage now. The patroller's not around, so... Open it up. Head in here to reclose it. Then head to this stairway in the northwest corner, which will become our way to the second floor. Make sure to get this chest under the stairs. It's got a gem in it. It brings our total to 645. With that, the first floor is done, save the southern storeroom and the ballroom. So, I'm gonna make my real saves and I'm gonna move on. Patroller's nowhere around, so I'll go ahead and pick this lock. Sounds like he's approaching now, though. Yep, there he is. I'll just hide in the doorway shadow. I think that should be sufficient. It is. Excellent. Now here comes another bit of loot you will have to skip for Supreme Ghost. There's no way to loot this bedroom without deactivating the Watcher. So if you're a Supreme Ghoster, skip that loot. If not, open the secret passage. While you're in here, you might as well go ahead and get the ring from this chest. Brings your total to 745. Head for the security room. In here, you can get this purse off the table. Brings my total to 765. And now I need to deactivate that watcher. Let's leave all this open because I'll be back very soon. We may have to wait for the patroller to cycle again. Yes, we will. The ideal is to follow him out of this little side hallway towards that bedroom. So that's what we're going to shoot for. So I'm going to wait until I hear him get to the end of his patrol and come back. Oops, I messed that up. 
Okay. We should be good now. I'll leave that passage open because I'm headed back there in just a second anyway. Yeah, this door. We could sprint in and out encasing the joint, but this time it's locked. And the fact that we have to pick it open means we have to shut the watcher off if we want to get in here. So. In this room, there are two pieces of loot. Silver coins on the desk. Bring my total to 790. There's reading material by the bed, although it's bugged. Body bedtime limericks for discerning adults by Andelwine Muse. There once was a man from... And then it cuts off. I imagine... It would have been hilarious if I could read what was supposed to be there. But alas, I can't. In the closet, there's a chest with another diamond in it. Brings my total to 890. This time, I can just follow him straight down the hallway and slip into the secret passage while his back is turned. So that's what I'm going to go for this time. No problem. So now I can turn the watcher back on and never have any need to mess with it again. And I can continue on. Let's hit the trophy room now. In here, there's a broadhead arrow on the fireplace, a noisemaker arrow in this chest, a silver coin sack on the corner table brings my total to 910, and reading material. Hunting of the Frumious Bandersnatch by Captain Rufus T. Spaulding. And there I was in the darkest wilds, preparing to search for that most dangerous and elusive of adversaries, the Frumious Bandersnatch. This, of course, is not to be confused with the striped Fromane Bandersnatch, an exceedingly docile relative. No, the Frumious Bandersnatch, filthy beast, is a creature I have spent my whole life preparing to hunt. But where was I? Ah, yes, it was an early morning on the Veldt. We were on the trail of a particular Bandersnatch, and this one was even more frumious than most. I sat by my tent, sipping tea and munching on buttered scones. A few scouts had gone out the previous night to see where the creature lurked. Such creatures always lurk, unless they are, were skulking from one lurking spot to another. As I finished my tea and prepared for a second cup, two scouts trotted in. Funny thing, I swore I sent out five the night before. The leader walked up to me and announced that they had found the spot where the Bandersnatch was lurking. Unfortunately, it found the spot from which they observed. Now there are only two, poor buggers. I must remind them not to interrupt me during my morning cup of tea. Well, we had a starting point for the hunt. Now on to the chase. I love the looking glass people's sense of humor. I mean, I just think that's hilarious. So, that's it for the trophy room. Let's go on into the dining room now. In here, there's a gold candlestick on the corner table and two more on the dining room table, which brings my loot total up to 1,060. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now let's... No, I don't wanna close the passage yet, do I? Now the next thing I'm gonna tackle is this office. This loot also has to be skipped if you're out to Supreme Ghost. It will require the use of a moss arrow and the deactivation of a watcher. So, I'm gonna close this passage. I'm gonna head up here, and I will tell you what's about to happen. There's a corner watcher here. The office is locked. We, there is, we had to deactivate the watcher to loot the office and casing the joint. That's when it was unlocked. Now that we have to pick the lock, the watcher absolutely has to be turned off or there's no way to do it. 
Turning off the watcher requires us to sprint around the corner to where the switch is. The problem with sprinting is that it takes us over tile floor. There's a stationary guard here who will hear us if we make any noise on the tile. Thus, we have to use a moss arrow, we have to time the patroller and the watcher to sprint over here, then we have to get past the guard who, if I remember right, is sitting facing outward and will first alert to us, and then we can turn the watcher off, loot the office, turn it back on, taking another first alert in the process. So like I said, just skip the office if you're a Supreme Ghoster. The patroller is nowhere nearby. That doesn't actually prove much, except that I should at least have a chance to fire the moss arrow shot. That wasn't a good shot. That was a good shot, but the, uh, obviously the water caught us, so. Okay, I hear the, I hear the guard approaching. So I think now I should have time to make the sprint, if I time the watcher well, which can be hard to do because sometimes Garrett doesn't even like to get out the door. What's that? And so as you can see, he first alerts on it's your way through the door. Anything. And the interesting thing about his first alert though, is that this has happened to me more than once. You see, he gets up from his chair and turns around when he first alerts. Now, just creep across the car to the t carpet. Head back here. <clears throat> do more creeping. And we can shut off the watcher. Now... Since his back is turned, things are easier. We can pick open the office. I was about to say you can make noise, but then I remembered there's still a stationary guard over at the post. So no, you can't make noise. Anyway, supreme ghosting these offices is why I was interested in whether or not I could rope through the window encasing the joint. I have spent hours trying to make it happen and I've never gotten it to work. There are people who say they can, more power to them, that would make it possible. I just couldn't do it. So in the office, three, th two pieces of loot and three things to read. There's a purse on the dresser, brings my total to 1,085. There's a scroll on this table. Duma, good job thus far, I shall be back shortly. Glad to hear the mechanists are working out so well. I look forward to seeing what sort of contrivances they've brought to our humble mansion. If they are as good as you say, I shall speak most highly of Karis to other nobles. The gala reception shall be a testament to the progress our wonderful civilization has achieved. I must be away, I hear Karina calling and we have a fair morn, Lord Gervasius. There's a, another scroll on the desk. My lord, all the preparations proceed smoothly. Take your time returning. It sounds like your hands are quite full with matters in the countryside. I wish you all the best with the young lady Veladin. I'm sure that Lord Veladin will be ecstatic should a match arise out of this courtship. I can assure you that everything will be in readiness upon your arrival. You will hardly recognize this manor from the state it was in only a few months back. Foreman Hobart has fixed everything inside and then some. I consider myself to be a meticulous man, but these mechanists put even me to shame. New clocks, new lights, new guards, new servants. I yes, much has changed. I get the feeling it was supposed to go on and this is bugged again, much like the tale of the Frumius Bandersnatch. Ah well. And finally, there's a, another repeat thing to read on this end table. From the desk of Steward Duma, to-do list for the exhibition grand opening. Check all of Sergeant Porter's security plans. Remind him to add security to basement. There seem to have been intruders down there recently. Send Wilhelm the Cellarer off food shopping in Stone Market. Make sure he brings me the right change. I swear he's a thief in training. Order 15 dozen flower arrangements from that cute brunette at Rosie's Flower Shop. Do personally. Get a new powdered wig for my lord. Remember one ponytail, not two pigtails. Last, make sure you open the safe. There's a gold torque inside, brings my total to 1,235. 
Now I'm gonna head back over here. Listen for the patroller. He's close, I can't tell which way he's going. Okay, I think he's headed toward the foyer. Which is fine, actually. Who's over there? Nope, nope, he's not. Well, that's even better. He's crossing the moss, that's why he got quiet. <coughs> okay. Let's wait for him to... What's over there? Wait for him to open up enough distance to open the door without a first alert. And creep to the carpet. Close the office door. Go ahead and run in here to turn the watcher back on. Now we should still have time to get back to our secret passage before the patroller swings back. We just have to get good timing on the watcher, which we did. With that, we are done with the northern half of the second floor. So now we're going to go back all the way we came to the southern storeroom on the first floor. The patroller is somewhere close by. Well, somewhere within earshot, I should say. Oh, he's on his way in. Who's there? So let's just wait for him to cycle out. And then we will head back to, or head back downstairs, the same way we came up. Okay, we should be good now, so open it up, head out, close it, and head back downstairs.